a little while ago, I did a video on the official GitHub CLI tool, and in that video, I talked about some of the problems that it had with working with GitHub issues. Specifically, you couldn't do things like comment on an issue. And for me, that seemed like a pretty important feature to be missing. So today, we're going to be looking at a different GitHub CLI tool. This one focuses entirely on working with GitHub issues, and this one is called GHI. So this right here is the GitHub page for GHI, and the way that it describes itself is GitHub issues on the command line, use your editor, not your browser. And there's a couple of different ways that we can go and install this. So we can install it with Brew if you have Brew installed on a macOS system, or you can install it with Gem, or you can install it with Curl. I'm going to go through the Gem approach now. We install it with Gem because as you can see off to the side here, it is a Ruby application. So what we're going to do is just run this command. So gem install ghi and this shouldn't take too long to go and there we go it's done now i already had it installed so it's probably just trying to update it but if you didn't have it installed i reckon it will probably take a little bit longer like with a lot of other programs like this the first time you go and run it it's going to prompt you for your github credentials so just put those in and then once you've done that you'll be able to access any of the repos that you have permission to edit so that'll be any of your repos and then obviously any of the ones that you've been given the correct permissions to use so let's actually test it out. Now, we're not gonna be able to do much without being in a Git repo, but we can at least look at the help page. So as we can see, there's a couple of different options in here. So we have list, show, open, close, edit, comment, label, milestone, status, enable, and disable. Now this might seem like a lot of stuff to go over, but some of these ones are pretty basic. So disable, as you can see, it's a very simple option. All it's gonna do is disable issues in the current repo that you're in. And then enable is the opposite of that and status will just tell you whether issues are enabled or disabled for that current repo. So let's actually go into a repo just so we can test this out. So I actually made a test repo earlier. So there's absolutely nothing in this repo. I created it entirely for the purpose of this video. The only thing we have in here is one issue that I made earlier. So that is just titled a title and the description I believe is just, yeah, it's just description. And as you can see, I've been testing a couple of stuff with it. I put a comment on there and we'll have a look at that stuff in just a bit. But let's actually try out some of these options now. So as we saw before, we have the list option. So let's try out GHI list first. What this is gonna do is let you list out the issues in the current repo that you're in. So we run that and as we can see, we just have this one issue. So all of these sub commands also have extra options that go along with them as well. And, and the way that you can see those is just stick dash H on the end. So as you can see, we can do things like a global search, which is actually pretty cool. So you don't have to just be limited to working in the current repo that you're in. You can see everything that you currently have access to. So let's just run that for a second, GHI list dash G. So as you can see, that'll list all of the open issues in all of the repos that we're in. Now, if we'd instead wanna look at all of the closed issues, what we can do is do dash G and the dash S option. Dash S is for state, and we can set this to open or closed. So we'll run it with the closed option, and this will list out every single closed issue in all of the repos that we're in. So as you can see, there is a slight problem occasionally when you're using this application, and that is this one right here. So I'm not sure what's causing this, but one of the problems with this application is the fact that there's not actually a maintainer working on it right now. So over the years, there's been a bit of degradation, especially with GitHub changing the API and some of the stuff changing in Ruby. It still works most of the time, but you'll occasionally run into issues like this where you're not really sure what's going on with the output. One of the other issues that it has is GitHub very recently changed the way that it does authorization for their web API. And because of that, in November, this application is actually going to stop working, which I'm really sad about because it's a really useful application. And because there's no maintainer currently working on this, it's just going to stop working after that point. So part of the reason why I'm doing this video is because I wanna see someone who's used to working with Ruby, who knows how this application works, actually come and update it just so it works with the newest version of GitHub's authorization. That's all that needs to be done, and once that's done, it'll be a great application to continue using for years to come. So moving on from that, let's have a look at some of the other stuff this can do. So if we just go back into list again, and we have a look at some of the other options it has. So you can also do things like sorting by the label, or you can exclude labels, or you can have a reverse sort, or you can only do pull requests. So you can do a lot of the stuff that you can already do on the GitHub website, but you can actually do it directly from your command line. And if you actually need to go to the GitHub website, what you can do is run the dash W option. So if we do GHI list dash W, what that's gonna do is open up the GitHub issues within our web browser. So from time to time, you're gonna run into situations where you just can't do it from the CLI tool. 
So in those situations, this gives you a very easy way to actually get to the GitHub website. So going on to the next option, which I believe is show, what this one is gonna do is let you show the details of an issue. When it was opened, when it was closed and things like that. So this one doesn't really have that many options. Pretty much the only usage for it is GHI show and then pass in the issue number. So in this case, the issue we're gonna look at is issue one. So if we run that like this, as you can see, we can see the description, but for some reason the title's not there. And then if we scroll down a bit and come back up, the title's there, but, but the description isn't. Now this is another one of those weird issues where I'm not really sure what's going on with it. It seems like something that might've broke a while ago and then there was no one around to actually maintain it. But most of the stuff in here still works perfectly fine. So you can still see stuff like when it was renamed, when it was closed, when it was reopened. You can see comments. And generally, it's got a good framework for a really powerful GitHub issues tool, but it needs someone to be maintaining it. So if we keep going down, you can see things like when it was unassigned from someone, when a milestone was set to it, and things like this. So generally, it works perfectly fine. If we go back over to the GitHub page, as you can see, that pretty much represents what's going on here. As you can see, it doesn't show you what the title changed from, which I guess is a little bit of an annoyance, but it's not too big of a deal. Really, the only thing that matters is the current title. Both the open and close commands are very basic what those do as well. So if we just run GHI close and then run it on issue one, as you can see, it's gonna take a second and then this issue has been closed. Then we'll run this again, but we'll run it with open this time. So GHI open one, and this time it'll open up the issue. Now, both of these do have a couple of options that go along with them. So if we go open dash H, as you can see, we can do things like list the open tickets. So if we go GHI open dash L, basically that's gonna do the same thing as GHI list dash S open. And then the same thing is probably gonna be true for close as well. So I imagine there's a dash L option on this one and that will list all of the closed issues, which in this case, on this repo, there aren't any closed issues. But GHI open is also used to open up a new issue. So if we just run GHI open without giving it any arguments, what it's gonna do is open up a buffer with whatever your editor is set to. So in my case, that'll be for NVIM. Now, the way that this works is on the first line, you give it the title. So this, this is a title. And then on every line, the third one and after, this is gonna be a part of your description. And the way that you actually write the description is in GitHub flavored markdown. So there's a guide on how to do this on the GitHub website, and I'm not gonna go into this today, but let's just copy something from it. So what you're gonna see on the GitHub page is two lists and a code block. So if we just save this, what this is gonna do is actually go and create that issue. So as you can see, it's successfully done that. If we go back over to the GitHub page, and we refresh the page, it should have the issue here. So this is a title. And if we go in here, we have two lists. So we have an unordered list and we have an ordered list and then we have a code block. So that worked exactly the way that we'd expect it to. So as we saw before, we can then go and close this issue by doing GHI close and then giving the number of the issue. So in this case, it is numbered as two. Run that and as you can see, it's gonna be closed now. And then we can just go GHI open to, and that will then go and reopen it. So it's as simple as that. So we're gonna skip ahead a bit and look at the option that differentiates this from the official GitHub client, and that is GHI comment. So if we just run GHI comment with the dash H option, as you can see, there's not too many options in here. We can do things like go and modify a comment, we can delete a comment, we can close the associated issue with the comment, but first up, we're actually gonna need a comment. So this works in a very similar way to GHI open. So if we go GHI comment, and then just put in the issue number that we wanna comment on. So in this case, we're gonna comment on issue two. Now, the way this works is very similar to what we saw before, except we don't have a title. So everything is treated as the description. So we can go and put any of this GitHub flavored markdown in here, and that would work as we would expect on GitHub. And let's just put some other junk in here as well. And then once we go and save this, what this is gonna do is actually send this comment up to this GitHub issue. And as we can see, we now have that comment. So we have this code block and we have all of this other garbled text. So that also works the same way we would expect as well. But what you can do alongside the GitHub comment option is as you saw, you can actually close an issue once you post the comments. So if we do GHI comment dash dash close on issue two, what this is gonna do is open up another buffer. And then once we actually save this comment and then it gets posted up, what it's gonna do is put the comment there and then close the issue right after that. So we could say something like this issue is now closed. And as you're gonna see, the comment is gonna be up here in just a moment, yep. 
and now the issue is closed as well. One other thing you might want to do alongside actually being able to comment on an issue, you're probably going to want to be able to actually edit an issue as well. So if we go GHI edit and then look at the help page for that, there's a couple of options in here. They're very similar to what we saw with the comment options though, but there's a couple of other things in here as well, like being able to set who an issue is actually assigned to. So let's just run GHI edit on issue two and not give it any of the other options. What this is gonna do is open up a buffer that contains everything that we saw before. So we have this as a title, this is some list stuff in here, this is a code block, but let's get rid of the code block. Let's say we don't need the code block anymore and it's just kind of taking up space. So if we save this now, what this is gonna do is actually go and delete that. So as you can see off to the side here, that code block is no longer visible anymore. Along with being able to assign an issue within GHI edit, there's also a dedicated command to do this as well. And that is GHI assign. So if we just run that now, GHI assign dash H. Now there's not a ton of stuff you can do with this. Basically everything that you could do within GHI edit, you can do here as well. So you could do something like assign the issue to someone, you can unassign it, and then you can list all of the assigned issues. So if we just run GHI assign to, and then we don't give it a user, what it's gonna do is assign it to ourselves. So we run this now and I don't know if this will auto update. Yes, it will. So as you can see off to the side here, the assignee is now set to me. And if we just run that with the dash D option or the dash dash no dash assign option, what that's gonna do is unassign the option for myself and now no one is assigned to the issue. So if I just reassign that to myself and then I run GHI assign dash L, what this should do is list all of the issues that are assigned to me, but I just realized that I forgot to actually reopen this issue. So if we go GHI open two, and now we do GHI assign dash L again, what this is gonna do is as you can see, we have issue two assigned to myself. We can also go and mess around with GitHub labels as well. So if we go GHI label dash H, this works in a very similar way to what we saw before. So GHI label dash L, what that's gonna do is list out all of the labels that we have. And in my case, that'll only be the default label. So we have bug, documentation, duplicates, so on and so forth. So if we run a GHI label and give it a name, so let's call it test and then let's give it a color. So I don't know, FF, FF, FF. Sure, that'll just be white. And that should create a new label called test. Yes, it did. And now we run list again. And as you can see, we have the new label test. And if we wanna go and assign a label to an issue, what we should be able to do is GHI label, the issue number that we wanna to assign to. So we're gonna to assign to issue two and then dash A. So we're gonna add a label to that issue and we'll add the label test. So as we can see, that says it's worked fine. We go over here and now it has the test label. So that also works as we would expect as well. And then if you didn't like that it had that label, what you could do is GHI label two dash D. So this time we're gonna do delete and we're gonna delete label test. And as we can see over here, that label has now been removed. And there's one last command I wanna mention, and that is milestone. Now milestone, like with label, could be really useful as well, so you could actually go and create milestones from your terminal and then assign the milestones, but it has a slight problem. So if we just have a look at the help page for milestone, what we're gonna notice is that there's no way to actually go and create a milestone. You can assign milestones, you can remove milestones, you can edit a milestone, but you can't create a milestone. And because you can't create a milestone, that makes it considerably less useful. What you can do though, is you can go and list your milestone. So if we do GHI milestone, spell that correctly, dash L, what this is gonna do is list all of our milestones. And I just made a test milestone in my web browser earlier. And as I said earlier, there's no way to go and create a milestone from your terminal. Now I know this has a main focus on issues, but if you're going to include milestones, then they should be handled properly. So you should be able to create them, delete them and edit them, not just be able to delete them and edit them. Without having that last feature there, it kind of makes it considerably less useful. So that's pretty much everything I want to talk about today. Now, overall, I think this is a pretty useful tool, but it does obviously have its severe problems with the fact that after November or something like that, the old version of the authorization, which has been deprecated, is going to be removed. So after that point, if no one has come to maintain it, it's going to stop working. But assuming that someone does come to maintain it, then this would be a pretty useful tool to use alongside the official GitHub CLI tool, at least until the official GitHub CLI tool has a way to better work with issues. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about today. 
And before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim Nathan, Andrew Montazar, Peter Dave Road, Tony Nolan, Kulari, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, I'm going to go check out my podcast. That is Tech of It's here, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel, also available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.